Okay, in this video we're going to talk about some of the properties of the secant graph. So uh, in the last video we talked about the graph itself and why it looks the way it does. We plotted some points, plotted the asymptotes, things like that. Um, now we're going to talk about some of these properties here. So uh, it's going to be pretty similar to the property videos for the uh, tangent and cotangent graphs. So we're going to start with the domain. And remember the domain is the set of all the x values that we're allowed to use. In other words, the set of all the possible input values. Um, and we do have some restrictions here, so before we continue with the domain, let's first write down that uh, secant of x equals 1 divided by the cosine of x. Okay? So why is that relevant? Well, cosine by itself, uh, if you just have cosine of x by itself, then x is allowed to be anything we want, right? Because cosine has no domain restrictions. But the problem here is that we're dividing by cosine, so if we divide by cosine, we have to make sure that cosine is never 0. Okay? And the one up here is just one, that doesn't affect anything, we're fine with that. So basically the domain is all, uh, all real x, except for uh, the zeros of cosine. And remember, that's a pre-calculus college algebra term, so a zero of a function is a value of x that makes the function equal to zero. So a zero of cosine would be like pi over 2, because cosine of pi over 2 is zero. Or 3 pi over 2, because cosine of 3 pi over 2 is zero. Um, negative pi over 2 and negative 3 pi over 2, those are two more zeros of cosine, because the cosine uh, function evaluated at those points is zero. Okay, but anyway, um, so that's how we say it in English. What if we want to say this uh, in mathematical terms? So we use set builder notation, just like with tangent and cotangent. So that'd be uh, x such that x does not equal 2k plus 1 times pi over 2, where k is any integer. All right, so we've talked about that um, in many videos now, um, so we don't want to dwell too much on the details here. But basically, this is just a short way of listing out um, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, uh, 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, and so on and so forth. Because if k is any integer, then 2k has to be even, because it's divisible by 2. Then if you take an even number, add 1 to it, then you're going to get some odd number. So basically, just take an odd number, multiply by pi over 2, that gives you something that x is not allowed to be. Okay, because if you take an odd number, multiply by 2, then cosine of x is 0. And if cosine is 0, then secant is undefined. So we see that here, actually. Um, 1 times pi over 2. 3 times pi over 2, negative 1 times pi over 2, negative 3 times pi over 2. Okay, we have breaks in the domain, and those breaks come in the form of vertical asymptotes, right? So that's our domain here. Okay. So it's actually uh, the exact same domain as for the tangent, because remember, tangent is sine of x divided by cosine of x. Okay, and the sine of x doesn't matter at all for the domain, because it's on top. Okay, but it's, uh, tangent and secant have the exact same domain, because they have the same denominator. All right, what's next? Uh, the range is next. So the range is um, kind of, it's, it's more difficult than we'd like. It's, there's a little more going on. So remember, with tangent and cotangent, the range was just all real numbers, which is nice. Uh, but here, there's a little more going on. So if we look at the graph here, um, let's look at this point right here, 0, 1. So if we go anywhere above that, no matter how far up above that we go in the positive y direction, so that's the y-axis right here, um, in the positive y direction, no matter how far up we go, um, we're always going to have some piece of the graph somewhere up there. Okay, so basically, um, as long as you're at y equals 1 or above it, then um, you've got some piece of the graph there, so that's uh, all those y values are part of the range. Okay? Similarly, uh, if we look at the graph down here or here, um, if you're at y equals negative 1, okay, here or here, or if you're below it, then you've got some piece of the graph somewhere there, right? So if you're here, um, then no matter how far down you go in the negative y direction, no matter how far down you go from there, um, you're still going to have a piece of the graph, okay? Because these arrows down here indicate just keep going down forever and ever. Um, these arrows here indicate the same thing. These arrows up here indicate the graph keeps going up forever and ever, okay? So, and it just gets infinitely closer to the asymptote, never touches it, you never touch or cross vertical asymptotes at all, never ever. Um, and then the graph just keeps going up forever, keeps going down forever here. Okay, so we get all the y values up here, all the y values down here, but notice in between, the graph doesn't touch those. Okay, so basically the range is everything, um, so the range is negative 1 and everything below it, and positive 1 and everything above it, but notice that there's no piece of the graph that touches anything in between. So for example, y equals uh, negative 1 half. So negative 1 half y value would be right about here. Okay, 
but there's no uh, piece of the graph that touches it. Okay, so if we go all the way out to the right, all the way out to the left, no matter how far to the right or left we go, we're never going to find an x value such that y equals negative one half is on the graph. Okay, because the graph um, never comes above negative one on pieces like this, and the graph never goes below positive one on pieces like this. Okay. So um, everything in between, negative one and positive one, is not part of the graph. Okay. So actually, um, the way we express that is uh, in interval notation. So um, in interval notation, what we would say is negative infinity comma negative one. Okay, square bracket on the negative one because that is part of the domain, or sorry, that is part of the range. Okay, because uh, negative one, we do actually get that value when x is negative pi or positive pi or uh, positive 3 pi and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, so negative infinity, negative 1, that covers pieces like this. Okay. So negative infinity come all the way up to negative 1, negative infinity come all the way up to negative 1. Now what about pieces like this? Well this would be a uh, union square bracket positive 1 comma all the way up to positive infinity. Okay. So negative infinity to negative one, square bracket on the negative one, always put a round parenthesis on negative infinity and positive infinity. Okay? So that's going to uh, cover pieces like this right here, okay? pieces like that. And then here, um, square bracket on the one, comma, positive infinity, uh, that's going to cover pieces like this right here. Okay? So that's our range. So a little more complicated uh, than tangent and cotangent, but really not too bad. It's basically just everything except the numbers in between negative one and positive one. But be careful because negative 1 and positive 1 themselves are part of the range, so that's why we have square brackets. Okay, so that's domain and range. What about the period? So the period we've mentioned a couple times, but we'll bring it up again because we're looking at the graph here. So the period um, is just 2 pi. Oops. So the period is 2 pi. Okay, why is that? Well, remember, secant of x is 1 over cosine, and cosine, the period of cosine is 2 pi. Okay. So um, since secant is just the reciprocal of that, uh, there's nothing really too fancy. The 1 doesn't change anything at all. Um, <clears throat> since cosine has period 2 pi, then secant is going to have the same period. Okay. okay, so the period is 2 pi. And we see that, um, well, we don't, I guess we don't really have enough drawn here, but the graph is going to repeat after every 2 pi units. So here's one complete cycle right here. And uh, from negative pi over 2 to positive 3 pi over 2, that's one complete cycle. So if we shift over one more uh, 2 pi, 2 pi units, one more complete cycle, we're going to have that same shape. So a piece up here and a piece down here, okay? and then shift over one more cycle, pi, uh, 2 pi units, we're going to have that same uh, shape going on. Okay? So domain, range, and period. Uh, let's talk about the vertical asymptotes. So VA for short. Okay, and the vertical asymptotes, uh, they are vertical lines, so we want to express them using uh, the correct form of the equation of a line. So it's uh, x equals 2k plus 1 times pi over 2, where k is any integer. Okay. Um, and again, it's exactly the same thing as uh, for a tangent. And the reason is vertical asymptotes, they are pretty much defined by your denominator. Okay, so the denominator here is cosine. So wherever cosine is 0, as long as the top is not also 0, you're going to have a vertical asymptote. Well, 1 is just the constant 1, okay, so 1 is never 0. So basically, wherever the cosine function is 0, that's where you have a vertical asymptote. And we know, uh, we've talked about it several times, uh, once in this video and several times in several other videos, um, cosine is 0 at these values here, 2k plus 1 times pi over 2, odd integer multiples of pi over 2. Okay? So, um, and it's worth writing down that these are the zeros of cosine. Okay, so that's uh, vertical asymptotes. They happen at the zeros of cosine. Exactly the same thing as with the uh, tangent function, because tangent is sine divided by cosine, so the denominator is cosine. So uh, vertical asymptotes are going to happen at the zeros of the denominator, or the zeros of cosine. Okay, so tangent and secant have the same vertical asymptotes. All right, how about uh, x-intercepts? So this is actually pretty simple, which is nice. So x-intercept, remember, an x-intercept, that's a point where you're on the x-axis. doesn't matter if you touch and turn around or if you cross it. As long as you're on the x-axis, that's an x-intercept. Well, if we look at the graph here, 
um, we see that uh, we don't have any x-intercepts. We never touch the, uh, the x-axis, right? And also we kind of tell that from the range. So um, as far as the range goes, the x-intercept, that's a point where y equals zero. Okay, but with the secant, y can never be zero. Okay, so zero is not part of the range. So there's no value of x such that secant of x equals zero. Okay, so uh, again, there's no value of x such that secant of x equals zero. So since secant can never be zero, um, then there's no x-intercepts. Okay, he says you'll, the graph will never be on the x-axis. So x-intercepts, uh, that would be none. And uh, how about the y-intercept? So remember, functions can only have at most one y-intercept, otherwise they're not functions, because um, they'll fail the vertical line test. But anyway, uh, y-intercept. So just like an x-intercept is a point where you're on the x-axis, a y-intercept is a point where you're on the y-axis. Are we on the y-axis anywhere? Uh, yeah, here at 0, 1. Okay, so the y-intercept, uh, we could say, is y equals 1. Okay, or you could answer as uh, 0, 1. So the y-intercept technically is a point, so 0, 1 might be better to say, but you could just, it's uh, understood that at a y-intercept, x equals 0, so you could just say y equals 1. Okay. So anyway, uh, that's that. Um, okay, so domain, range, period, vertical asymptotes, uh, x-intercept, and y-intercept. Um, it's probably worth mentioning that uh, just like with tangent and cotangent, there is no concept uh, of amplitude. Because remember, with sines and cosines, you can talk about amplitude, like the amplitudes of the functions, things like that. Um, but for secant and cosecant and tangent and cotangent, it does not make sense to talk about that. Okay, so be very careful, keep that in mind. Um, it just doesn't make sense at all. Also, just like with tangent and cotangent, uh, we've already talked about, um, if you want to talk about shifting left and right, um, it's better not to use the term phase shift, because phase shift, it's a fancy term for horizontal shift, but it technically only applies to sines and cosines, um, technically speaking. People will know what you mean if you say it, but it's probably better just to say horizontal shift because um, uh, most people just use phase shift for waves, things like sine and cosine, okay? So um, one last thing worth mentioning here. Uh, secant is an even function. Okay, so what does that mean? So we've actually talked about that. We've used that property quite a bit already. Um, but basically, algebraically, what that means is that secant of negative x equals secant of x. Okay, that's what that means algebraically. Um, what does that mean geometrically? So uh, we actually kind of used this property to uh, obtain the graph in the last video, but it's worth mentioning again here just to summarize the properties. So um, geometrically or graphically, what that means is that uh, the graph is symmetric over the y-axis. So if you um, take this piece, flip it over the y-axis, you're just going to get a mirror image of that. Okay, we do see that relatively clearly here, right? So take this piece, flip it over the y-axis, reflect over the y-axis, and you're just going to get exactly this piece right here, right? Take this piece, reflect it over the y-axis, okay, reflect over the y-axis, and you're going to get exactly this piece right here, okay? So that's all it means uh, geometrically to be an even function. So geometrically or graphically speaking, if you're an even function, then your graph is symmetric uh, over the y-axis. Okay, so flip it, or just think of it as like a reflection in a mirror. So here's the mirror right here, um, an object reflecting in the mirror. So this piece right here just gets reflected over, same exact thing over here. Um, and we see that with the asymptotes too, right? So that's true of the asymptotes. So x equals pi over 2, reflect that over the y-axis, you get x equals negative pi over 2. Okay? x equals 3 pi over 2, reflect over the y-axis, x equals negative 3 pi over 2. Okay? So um, that's what it means to be an even function graphically, just symmetric over the y-axis. Um, anyway, that's some properties of the secant graph and properties of cosecant coming up next.